Hello, in this video recording, we're going to cover how to create your first Windows 2022 Active Directory group policy object. First, let's define what group policy is. Group policy is a collection of policy and preference settings that help administrators centralize the management of things like security, client configuration. We can even deploy software and scripts through it. We'll use the Group Policy Management Console to manage our policy at a centralized level. We'll take a look at the sysfall directory. This is where our policies and scripts are stored. We'll be able to apply policy to users and computer objects. And we'll also see how policy is fully enforced and cannot be overridden by the end user. This is the first of several group policy related videos that we'll be making and sharing on this channel. Just a quick review of the environment that we've been building through this video series. We have multiple domain controllers set up. We have a DNS server as well too, a DHCP server, we have a web server running IIS and several domain join clients. In this example, we'll use server A and we'll use one of the workstations to see how group policy works. Let's jump into the lab. So let's take a look first with our server A, which is our domain controller. Let me go ahead and sign in. I'll sign in as a domain administrator. Let's first start taking a look at our Active Directory Users and Computers console. Take a look at our organizational structure. You'll notice that I haven't done much to the structure of the Active Directory OUs. So at this time, we're very limited on how we can deploy group policy. In your domain environment, you'll probably want to create OUs to, to mimic the structure of your business functions. For example, your business may have different departments, like the HR department, or the marketing department, or even the IT department. Let's go ahead and create an OU for starting that structure. I'll right click my domain environment and say new OU. And we'll call this the HR department. And I'll click OK. Now that I have an OU, I can create objects in that OU, such as users, computers, and groups. I'll right click my HR OU and create a new user. We'll give it a generic name, John Doe. And John Doe's user ID will be John D. I'll assign a password to John. And while normally I would force John to change the password at next logon, I'm going to uncheck this so that we can run through our lab a little bit quicker without having to change the password again. I'll click Next. Now that I have a John account, I can easily apply policy to the HROU, which will impact John. So let's move over to the Group Policy Management Console. I'll go back to Server Manager. I'll click on Tools. I'll click on Group Policy Management. Group Policy Management automatically connects me to the forest root domain, in this case, domain.local. I can expand domains, and you can, hear, you can see my domain.local domain. Let me expand this view a little bit. Notice I don't see any containers in this structure such as the computer's container, or the user's container, or any other system containers. And the reason is, is because policy cannot apply to containers. They can apply, however, to the root level of the domain, and they can also apply to OUs. Matter of fact, policy can also apply to sites. That's going to be beyond the scope of this tutorial. We'll leave that for another video. But for now, we can see that we can apply policy at the domain object and at the OU object. So before we proceed by creating our first group policy object, let's figure out where are these policies stored on the domain controller. We can take a look at that by going to the file explorer. And from the address bar, let me just access this server's network resources via UNC path. Backslash, backslash, server A, and I'll hit enter. Notice there's two folders that have been shared by default, a net logon and sysfall. Both of these file shares serve the same purpose. They're there to store policies and scripts for our domain join clients. The difference is that the net logon folder is there for backup compatibility. It services pre Windows 2000 clients, such as NT4. We haven't seen these type of clients on any of our networks lately, so we're not going to be using the net logon anytime soon or in the future. So we're going to focus our efforts on sysfall. This is the location where our group policy objects and scripts are stored. If I navigate into the sysfall, you'll see that there's a domain.local folder. I'll double click it 
you'll see that there's a folder for policies and scripts. I'll click on policies so you can see that there's two folders already created. These are the two default policies that are in place today. One is for the default domain policy and the other one is default domain controllers policy. Actually, there isn't much reason for us to come in manually into the sysfall. I just wanted to show you where these, these policies and scripts are located. I'm going to go ahead and close File Explorer and let's go back to Group Policy Management. So those two default domain policies that we saw are located right here. Here you can see the first default domain policy with this, which is linked to the domain object. And if I expand the domain controllers con uh, OU, you can see that there's a default domain controllers policy. You can modify these policies as you see fit, as they're no different than any, or po any other policy object in the domain. However, I think it's a good practice not to modify these policies, but to create your own policies. Let's continue by taking a look at the HROU. Notice if I expand it, there are no policies that are linked to the HROU at this time. You can see here that under the linked group policy objects tab, it shows no policies linked. Policies are inherited by default. Notice here that because the HROU is under the domain object, and the domain object has a default domain policy, this policy is inherited to the child objects, in this case, an OU, such as HR. Let's go ahead and create our first group policy object. And we'll do something very simple, like preventing the user from accessing the command prompt. I'll right click the HROU and say create a GPO in this domain and link it here. We'll give it a name. We'll call this one Disable CMD. Hit OK. Now the policy itself has no settings or configuration, so we'll need to edit it. I'll click on the policy, I'll right click and I'll say Edit. This brings up the Group Policy Management Editor. Notice that each policy that you create will have a computer configuration and a user configuration. With each configuration, you have the ability to create policies and preferences. The difference between the two is that policy is enforced, while preference delivers the setting but allows the user to change it. Most of the time, you'll be probably setting policies because policies are enforced. Preferences are not. Preferences allows the user to make a change. For example, I can deliver a certain background image or even background color as a preference. The user, once they log in, could change it. The policy, on the other hand, doesn't allow the user to make a change. In this example, if we want to disable the CMD from the user, it's going to be a user configuration policy. So I'm going to click on Policy. I'll expand this. We're going to go to Administrative Templates. We're going to go to System. And now on the right side, we can locate our policy. In this case, our policy is at this root setting level. We don't have to further navigate into additional settings. You'll find that there's thousands of different preloaded settings that you can modify. OK, so the one that we're interested in is prevent access to the command prompt. Notice at this point, it's not configured. Let me click on standard here to kind of get more real estate on the screen. I'm going to double click this policy. Another thing that once you start working with the policies, you'll want to make sure that the policy that you're working on is supported on the client that you're trying to target. A lot of the policies are backward compatible all the way to Windows 2000, but you'll notice that some may require a certain version of the operating system like Windows XP or Windows 7 or Vista or some of the server operating systems as well. Just keep note of that. In this case, this policy can apply all the way back to Windows 2000. We want to go ahead and enable this policy, so I'll click the Enable button. If you want to prevent scripts from processing also, you can check this um, drop-down and hit Yes. In our case, we just want to prevent the user from accessing the command prompt. There's also a Help section in each of these policies where you can read more about what these settings do. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice that this policy is now enabled. I'll close the editor, and this policy is ready to be available. Also keep in mind that policy is advertised. It's not pushed down to the clients or the users. It's made available, and when computers boot up or when users sign on, they'll check with the domain controller to see if there's any new policy that needs to be downloaded and applied. 
This typically happens at a certain cadence, every 90 minutes or so, which can be changed by the administrator through another policy. So I'll switch over to the Windows 10 client at this moment so we can see how this policy affects the user. So on my Windows 10 machine, I'll go ahead and log in as John D. Let me click Other User. Let me put in the password for John D. Make sure you're signing into the domain as opposed to a, a local account. This is the first time I sign on with John D, so a profile needs to be created. I'm now signed into the domain as John D. Let's take a look to see if our policy is applied. I'll try launching the, the command prompt. I'll type in CMD. Notice that the policy has already been applied. It says the command prompt has been disabled by your administrator. Press any key to continue. So our policy is in effect. No matter what workstation or client that John D logs into, this policy will follow the, the, this user around. And that's because we made a user configuration setting on this policy. It's going to follow John wherever John goes. So that's the end of this video on how to create your first group policy object. Stay tuned for more videos on group policy. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again.